colorful autumn has arrived at our country house. After all the summery videos from our travels in Cyprus, where we were constantly swimming in the warm sea, it's an interesting change. You can smell the leaves in the air everywhere in our garden, and there is this calm atmosphere that we've been enjoying a lot. It's the end of October when we are filming this, and it's autumn in our yard, but the pelargonias or geraniums are still here because it's not frosty, <laughs> so they can be outside. The sour cherry tree is so pretty. The leaves are turning yellow and it's amazing. It's pleasant, a bit windy, but this part of autumn is the nice one and soon the ugly one will come and everything will be colorless. But now it's pretty. I like the flowers for the first time they are here in autumn. Two weeks ago there were a few quite frosty mornings. Tommy had to move them inside because they wouldn't survive frost. But frost was over really quickly and now they can be outside again. So they are tanning here <laughs> and they like it, I guess. Last year we made a mistake with our walnuts. We let them lie in tall wet grass for a long time and they went bad. So this year we learned our lesson and we are picking them gradually. So here is today's harvest and we will add them to the previous ones. An interesting thing happened this year. I let some of the walnuts dry off outside and when I came back one week later they were gone. <laughs> there were just two walnuts left there. Yeah, and it was this whole basket, right? Yeah, about this amount. And they were all gone ex except two. So I was wondering <laughs> if some birds took them away, probably. Because yeah. there were no uh, leftovers anywhere. It was mm -hmm. just completely gone. Mm -hmm. As if someone stole them. Yeah, so, so an weird. Another lesson learned. <laughs> and now we are letting them dry off inside. Yeah. <laughs> so here you never know. Anything can disappear anytime. Yeah, it's a wild something. <laughs> yeah, it's a it's wild here. <laughs> yeah, so look at the area here under the walnut tree. Tommy mowed it and now the leaves are falling as well. So the area is prepared for the fallen walnuts and they are easy to spot here. Yeah. So that's very nice. We are getting better at this gardening stuff. We are, I agree. <laughs> trying to create a bat here but this pumpkin is so hard the outer shell or whatever this is we had to saw it off with a <laughs> saw the top part this big knife wasn't enough so you can imagine how hard it was now to carve oh my god so i will refine this but Ooh, I'm tired. It was a workout. Yes, it was. We have so many Halloween pumpkins. Look at this. Tommy has grown this. Yeah, I thought I only planted one <laughs> seed. But I don't know if this is all coming from one plant. Maybe. You... Like, you never know, but I'm not going to carve all of them, <laughs> definitely not. So, three are here, ready for 
Halloween and the others are decorations or maybe I can use them for cooking or baking but these ones are quite bland so this is not the main thing that we eat mm -hmm. we have other kinds that are more delicious but so, we ate these last year and they were fine yeah they were fine just different so yeah again abundance of pumpkins since it was already freezing once about two weeks ago we had to move some of the plants that wouldn't survive frost inside indoors so we ha we have honey berries they still have some fruits as well so we are keeping them there and we will see if they will still ripen here probably not maybe a few of them we'll see but we want them to survive so that we could put them outside again in the spring mm -hmm. And we are also storing here our pumpkins and squashes. So here you have one part of them. It's mostly Hokkaido pumpkins mm -hmm. or red curry squashes. We love those, that's our favorite. Yeah. So we want a lot of those. The tastiest. <laughs> yeah. And then we have these uh, butternut squashes. Butter pumpkins is what we call them here. Yeah, not sure about the name, but yeah. you can see them and they are quite nice as yeah. well, taste-wise. We ate one of them so far mm -hmm. and it was better than we expected. Yeah. And uh, these ones we already showed you before. Petty pan squash. Yeah. So we still have several left of those as well. Mm -hmm. And we read on the internet that you can store all of these for several months. So that's what we are going to eat until spring. <laughs> yeah, and that's not all. Show us more pumpkins here. Uh, we have more of the butter ones mm -hmm. here. And also one more Halloween pumpkin. I think we call <laughs> it here Mexican pumpkin. Mm -hmm, I think so, okay. yeah. So we have all of those as well. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and where are we? We are in our guest house. Yes. So our guests are now the pumpkins and squashes. <laughs> yeah, they will sleep here and rest here during winter or maybe later we will move them to the main house because it gets quite cold here. It could theoretically freeze here inside mm -hmm. and it's also very humid here so they could go bad. So yeah, we'll see. So this is temporary and yeah, like they will they will be moving and they can experience more places. Yeah. They are travel travelers. <laughs> but since we are here, guys, we have one improvement. We installed hot water in this house. <gasps> yes. We have it's the same device which we have in the main house as well. But this time we installed it ourselves. Mm -hmm. And so. remind us what this device does it heats up water but how like it's simple electrically mm -hmm. so the water the cold water comes here into this device it's connected to electricity and it heats it up yeah so it, the water is flowing through the heating or something and then it's warm yeah <laughs> yeah and we are very proud of this because we did this yeah for the first time we did something we did some plumbing mm -hmm. ourselves. So we are becoming plumbers. <laughs> yeah. Yay. And we can see a pot under it because, of course, it was dripping, but the dripping is stopping. Yeah. So it's getting better and we are hopeful it will stop completely eventually. Yeah. When we started, when we installed it, it was dripping like every few seconds. Mm -hmm. And now there's uh, one droplet of water like every half an hour or something yeah so yeah. Mm -hmm. it will stop eventually yeah it will and since we are here i also did one more thing here in this outhouse look at this I did the floor here. Wow. So I put these bricks here, there was nothing. And I poured sand in between the gaps. And now you can walk here better. <laughs> so that's nice. And I also installed this, this seat or whatever that is. So now it's very comfortable. 
Mm-hmm. And I installed a light here. Yes. Show us. Ah, it's working. Yay! It's working, but... However... It, however, <laughs> the cable got separated on its own. So there's a solar panel outside mm-hmm. and it's supposed here. to be charged. Look, here is the solar panel. There is this cable and it goes here and something happened. We just arrived one day and it was separated. So we have no idea what happened. I'm guessing it was a mouse or a bird. Maybe like this wildlife here on our property. It's wild. (laughs) So yeah, so we need to repair the cable somehow. Yeah. But our guests at our guest house have a perfect accommodation now. Yes, yes, perfect outhouse (laughs) and hot water there. And yeah, this is turning into a luxurious resort. (laughs) Yeah, guys, wow. I also hit our marigolds uh, indoors when it was freezing, but then it stopped freezing. So I moved them back outdoors and they are still going strong. They have less flowers, you can see that they are slowly ending, but this is the first year that we have them and they, they've they been flowering for so long. I yeah, like it. yeah, it's amazing. And some of them are not coming to an uh-huh. end, like these ones. Yeah. Wow, they yeah, are yeah. going strong. And I already harvested some of the old flowers with seeds, mm-hmm. so I will then plant them again from seed from our own seeds next year yeah yeah these marigolds totally were a very nice surprise yeah and we got the seeds from our neighbors so it's nice that we can now grow them ourselves as well yeah guys i don't know if you remember our cabbage in the garden wasn't growing very well but look there are heads of cabbage here These are all the terrible leaves, half eaten by bugs and everything. There is more of them than the heads, but (laughs) I think like we got quite a lot. Red cabbage and white cabbage as well. (laughs) The the heads, some of them are really (laughs) small, so it's very cute, but it's better than nothing. So I'm going to attempt to prepare sauerkraut, you know, sour cabbage, lacto-fermented. I have no idea. I have recipes on the internet and there is a mess in our kitchen. It's always. always, Yeah, that's (laughs) always the case. And here we have more harvest, still tomatoes and the rest of eggplants and here for the first time corn it doesn't look the best (laughs) but again better than nothing this is the first time we have corn so maybe the last time as well yes it wasn't growing very well so (laughs) maybe the last time but it's nice when we have new things and Yeah, so I just wanted to share this. liquid as much juice out of the cabbage as possible so I'm using my full body weight and it's going so this is a great method I recommend it looks very innovative (laughs) well normally in the past people were jumping like in big barrels stomping on it right stomping yes so yeah, look look into the bowl, how much juice uh-huh. there is. It's working. Yeah, cabbage juice. So, yeah. <laughs> it's an adventure. After two hours, 
the juice should be released, it's not visible. But when I press it, it's there. Here we have a crock. That's the term that Tommy found on the internet. It's a ceramic little barrel. It's a recollage in Czech. Yes, and you put the cabbage in there. So I'm going to do that now. And I need to press really hard. And yeah, we need as much juice as possible because the main objective with this, with lacto fermentation, is that everything needs to be submerged in water, in the brine, in the juice, you know? Nothing can float because otherwise there could be mold and everything. So that's the main objective, submerge everything. So I'm putting the cabbage in the crock. And we need to press it as much as possible. There can't be any air in between the cabbage. You know, that's why we are pressing very hard. All the cabbage is in there. We only have a small amount, maybe up to here. But the internet says that it's okay if the crock is not full. So I was pressing very hard and now I'm going to pour the rest of the juice in. And it needs to be submerged. I will press more. And if there is not enough liquid, you can always make brine, you know? salty water, 1.5 to 2% solution, salty water. So, yeah, it needs to be submerged, everything. I'm pressing and pressing. I just want to be sure that <laughs> it's pressed as much as possible. Here I have a few leaves, whole leaves, that I will put in there so the little parts don't float, you know, so... <sighs> it's so stressful, but <laughs> I'm sure everything will be okay, but it doesn't have to be very, like, absolutely perfect. But, yeah, I don't want to mess this up. Look, I'm just putting it on top of it. Looks perfect to me. Yes, but then everything needs to be submerged. That's what I keep repeating. And now I will put this in. Special ceramic stones or like it's specially Weights. made for this. Yeah, it should be heavy. I would like it to be more heavy, but oh well. And yeah. <coughs> Put this in and yeah! And it looks like we are almost done. Now I'm going to put this lid or cover or whatever this is here. And this is specially designed for making sauerkraut. So there is this space for water. I'm going to pour water. And the carbon dioxide, the bubbles, will be able to escape, but the air, normal air, won't come into the crock. So that's how it works. And now we just have to wait for three weeks. We will keep it here in the condo where it's warmer. And after two or three weeks, it should be done the fermentation stops and then we will store it somewhere colder, probably at the country house. So wish us luck, hopefully it's a success and I'm hoping it is a success. <laughs> Yay!
Here we are after two weeks. I had to adjust the water in there because it was too salty and I felt like it wasn't doing anything. So I poured more fresh water in there to make it less salty, the brine. And now it looks like this. It's kinda tasty. Not very sour, so I will keep it there for longer. It should be three weeks, but we are here at the country house where it's colder, so it could be even more and it should slowly like do something. I'm glad it didn't go bad. Maybe it will in the coming weeks, but for now it looks normal, it's edible and I'm glad. It's always quite difficult to check how it looks because I have to remove these big leaves. They have to be on the cabbage and then these stones and everything, but yeah, it looks kinda okay. Come take a look inside. Maybe you will see something. So the cabbage is in the brine and yeah, the color is now a mix of the two kinds of the cabbage. So it's kinda red and everything. And that's it, that's the update. We created a new newsletter for you guys because we want to make sure that you know when we have a new video out. Yeah, you can't rely on YouTube. <laughs> You think you are subscribed and our videos will show up on your home pages. That's not always the case. The algorithm decides and sometimes it decides that this video is not for you, even though you would enjoy it. Yes, yeah, so if you always want to be notified when we have a new video out, then you can subscribe to our newsletter and we will send you an email every time, every week that a yeah. new video is released. Yeah, it's a simple email, everything is for free and it's the most reliable method. So yeah. there will be info about the video and maybe some other pictures and little live updates or something. So that will wait for you in your mailbox. So there is a link in the description or somewhere you will find it in the description and just subscribe and then you will receive little emails from us. <laughs> Actually, Tommy is the one who will be preparing the newsletter for you, so I really recommend subscribing. It's quite cute. You can also unsubscribe anytime if you don't like it for some reason. And it looks like that's it for now, and we will continue with Colorful Autumn next time. So until then, bye!